1996 Oldsmobile Cutlass Sierra with a 3100 engine. It has a unique drivability problem. Uh, customer complaint is intermittent low power. Um, it runs good when it's cold. It runs good at wide open throttle. Uh, she claims that she can drive through it. Almost feels choppy to a point, maybe ignition related. And uh, we found no trouble codes, no other symptoms at all, no problems with any of, this, any of the systems. But what we noticed is uh, the knock sensor, the knock retard number on a test drive will go to 20 degrees. So uh, the computer is basically taking away 20 degrees of timing advance during the test drive. And that's when we feel this low power condition. So let's see if we can duplicate it. Go ahead and let's, let's roll. We'll focus on our knock sensor noise, our knock sensor retard number, all kinds of knock sensor activity there. We're bogging right now. Step on it all the way, floor it. You on the floor? It's still bogging, isn't it? Yeah, we're still taking away a, a, a good bit of timing advance. All right, so you saw our knock sensor noise was there, a lot of knock sensor activity, a lot of knock sensor uh, retard degrees. Let's, um, let's pull over somewhere and um, unplug this knock sensor to get rid of the noise that it's making and uh, see if we can't uh, eliminate this uh, drivability problem. There it is again, we're bogging right now. 17 degrees of of knock retard right now 14 and uh, what we notice in the shop is this engine's noisy and uh, you know the fix for this for this problem is going to probably end up needing some engine work uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to pull over we're going to unplug the knock sensor get rid of the ability for the knock sensor to create a signal and uh, see if our drivability problem improves. This is real bad right now. We're barely making this hill. Punch it to the floor all the way. We all the way down. Still not right though. A lot of noise. A lot of degrees of retard. Okay, let's pull over. Okay, we're uh, sitting still. We have the knock sensor unplugged. You see our, our activity right here is very, very minimal compared to what we had before as far as a voltage level. Um, let's go for a ride, see what it does. Now we don't expect to see any knock retard degree here, not with the sensor unplugged. I'm picking up a little bit, got two degrees now, but it's not necessarily an issue. How's it feel? Good. Feels good? Yeah, there's no, I can get gas. Smooth acceleration. Yeah. Since we have no knock occurring with the sensor unplugged, again, showing two degrees on the scan tool, but that's not an issue. We don't have any knock sensor noise activity. You see this line down here. Any amount of noise that's in here with the sensor unplugged would just be interference from under the hood with the sensor being unplugged. Um, our drivability problem is now gone. So we've confirmed that our low power condition is caused by knock sensor noise. What we need to determine is where is that coming from? And uh, with this engine um, making some pretty, pretty decent metallic noises, can't tell if it's top end or bottom end at a certain RPM, we're pretty confident that uh, a, a an overly sensitive knock sensor is not the problem on this vehicle. So um, internal engine work is gonna need to be done. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the shop and um, I'm gonna show the other testing procedures involved with a knock sensor. And uh, just, just as a guide, not really necessary for this video, we know that our knock sensor is functioning. It's overly active. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna walk through the rest of the knock sensor test. All right, so doing underhood testing now. This knock sensor, 
best I can do is show you that the connector can't get down to a point where I can get the whole sensor on the video but it's right above the oil filter single wire sensor got my scope positively connected to the only wire to the sensor and I have my scope negative lead connected to the block and I'll show you what the scanner or the scope looks like next okay so what we're looking at the key is on right now engines off again I showed you my scope leads uh, positively to the signal wire the knock sensor negatively to ground and what we're looking at is a voltage reading to the knock sensor this is a bias voltage the computer uses on this design uh, and the computer sends five volts to the sensor and the sensor internally has a bleed resistor that's supposed to pull it down a certain amount and the first thing that you can do to measure at least circuit integrity from the computer to the knock sensor, it's as simple as unplugging the knock sensor and looking for that five volt bias line. Um, so right now I'm reading 4.83 and I'm gonna reach down, unplug the knock sensor. We'll take a look what that number looks like with the sensor unplugged. There's a the knock sensor unplugged and I'm reading 4.94. So not a real big change, not what I'm used to seeing. Um, and what that tells us possibly is that resistor inside the NOx sensor is not doing what it should be doing, which is pulling this bias line voltage down. However, this car doesn't have a NOx sensor code, so I'm not overly concerned about that. But what this test does, it's a circuit integrity test. If you read five volts all the way out at the NOx sensor on this design, the wiring integrity is good. If you had a knock sensor trouble code, you can be confident to go ahead and put a knock sensor in it at that point. Um, just to elaborate on that a little bit more, this is uh, section 10 in my book, Signal Circuit Integrity. Hold that right there. And uh, just a generic picture of, of the internals of a knock sensor and kind of what I'm talking about is internal to the computer um, that you can see that I have in this generic picture is a five volt source through a resistor, current limiting resistor, and that's gonna go and make its way out to the knock sensor. Internal to the knock sensor would be a piezoelectric crystal that's gonna generate a, a voltage, sends it back to the computer, read as a engine knock, um, but there's a bleed resistor that would go around it to ground, and that's what pulls that bias voltage down. And so there's an illustration, there's a case study I have, you guys can check it out, um, signal circuit integrity, and that was on page six, and the case study's on page seven, where I'm actually doing the same test, disconnecting the knock sensor, checking circuit integrity. It was actually a vehicle that had a uh, PO327 um, trouble code in memory. But that's the test I'm showing right now, is the bias voltage test for the knock sensor. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to reach down, plug the knock sensor back in. Again, typically what we would see for this is a, a lot lower of a voltage drop than what we're getting. And uh, so we're at 483 plugged in. That's only a hundred millivolt drop. This might be a, a an indication that. Our knock sensor is, in fact, overly active. We do have some engine noise for this engine. No question about it. We have some internal issues. But for this knock sensor to be retarding timing as much as it is, sorry, for the engine computer to be retarding timing as much as it is because this knock sensor is so active, this could be an indication, the fact that we're only getting 100 millivolt change from, from plugged in and unplugged, that we have a knock sensor issue. So it might be worth putting a knock sensor in this engine anyway. But, but just to continue the knock sensor test. So this, the next part's gonna be plugged in testing. And our plugged in testing of a knock sensor is gonna be looking for the AC voltage that the knock sensor produces. And all I'm doing, I've taken a pry bar, just show you what, where I'm at. And I'm gonna hit on a metal part of the block. I'm just hitting on a bolt, sits right above the exhaust manifold. As I hit on that, it's going to create a metallic ring through the block. That knock sensor should pick that up. And so if we look over at the scope while I'm doing that, you're going to see an AC sine wave that's actually going to ride over top of the DC bias. If you watch it, 
That is an AC voltage that that knock sensor is producing. Uh, as far as my scope settings, that's a 10 volt scale. Uh, my time base is a uh, 10 millisecond screen, and you can play around with that until you're comfortable with what you're looking at. If you wanted to see more detail of that, there, it, it becomes a problem because if I drop this down to five volts, I'm gonna see my five volt line is buried at the top of this. Where's my stylus at? You see it up top there, and as I'm hitting on that, you're cutting off the signal. So you can't lower it anymore to zoom in on that voltage. And that's where AC coupling comes in on a scope. And what AC coupling is going to do, if I click on my AC coupling, what that's going to do is it's going to block all the DC bias, all the DC voltage, and only show the AC. <clears throat> there, there are times you want to AC couple a scope, this would be one. You want to see more detail on that knock sensor signal? I'm now on a five volt scale, but I'm AC coupled. So it's blocking all the DC. Even though there's a constant 4.8 volts DC on this line, the scope's blocking it. It's only going to show me the AC, and that makes for much nicer view. Now I'm not seeing that because my trigger setting is outside of the range. Bring that down. Makes for a much nicer view of that knock sensor signal when you AC couple the scope. So that would be an active test of the knock sensor. Knock sensor is your engine's microphone, but that's how you check it. Look for a bias voltage, unplug it, plug it in. We didn't like the result of our unplugged, plugged in test. The active test, smack on the block, look at your knock sensor signal. There's also another way that you can actually use your, your scan data and we can look at the knock sensor signal. I'm not gonna show you this one because it actually does not work on this car. I'm just gonna pick the RPM, knock sensor noise, knock sensor retard, hit okay. And if you focus on this retard number, which is zero degrees, we know this thing's producing a signal, right? If I smack on the sensor, I know it's producing a signal. If I go back to my scope, you can see that it's there. There's a knock for sure, knock signal occurring. But what you need to understand on the scanner is the computer isn't going to update that retard number unless there's vehicle speed, certain throttle angle, certain engine load. It's not even looking in that direction. So I can't duplicate this part in the shop. Some cars you can hold the engine off idle 1500 RPM, smack on the block next to the knock sensor, and the procedure would be look at your RPM, look at your knock retard. As the knock retard degrees increase, that means timing's being retarded, your RPM's gonna drop. If you hear that, that tells you your knock sensor's active. I can't show you that one on this car, it doesn't work. So that's it, this vehicle, has a overly active knock sensor, we could say, but it also has some engine noise to it. Um, we're gonna, uh, at least for this person for now, go in the direction of telling her to put a knock sensor in it, see if we can desensitize this a little bit. Uh, and if that doesn't take care of it, it's gonna need some internal engine work. So last thing, I'm gonna try to let you guys hear the engine noises this thing's making. All right, I'm not sure if you guys are gonna be able to hear this with all the other background noise. Uh, keeping in mind the symptoms on this car, when the engine's cold, the problem isn't there. I, I, I believe that has to do with the oil being thicker and whatever bearing clearance is in this motor, the noise isn't there. So the computer isn't taking the, the timing away, the spark advance away, so the car runs pretty decent when it's cold. I think that's the, the 20 minute drive time issue that she's complaining about. But let's take a listen. You can watch to the right of the screen. I still have the, the scope connected to the um, uh, to the knock sensor, so you can kind of watch that while I'm revving the engine. Let's see if I can get it to where it's a decent knock.
right, so I don't know if you can hear that or not. It's definitely very clear for us here. Um, pretty, pretty good engine, pretty good amount of engine noise on this thing. And honestly, after seeing that again, I, I really hesitate to put a knock sensor in this in spite of our bias voltage that didn't drop as much as we expected it to. Pretty good microphone there, which is what the knock sensor is. It's picking it up. Internal engine noise, computers retarding the timing, creating our drivability problem. Knock sensor issue, 96 Olds Cutlass Sierra.